Well, praise the Lord. It's so good to be with you today on what the world needs is Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've got to have the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And I want to say that I appreciate you for tuning in with us here today on what the world needs is Jesus. And I trust that if you know the Lord, that if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, that you need to get to know him, amen, and that you'll find you an altar and call upon the name of the Lord before we ever even finish this broadcast, amen, and then you will really enjoy, amen, the word of God and enjoy the singing and all the, and, and the preaching and all the word of God, man, I guarantee you, praise God, God going to do something for you, amen, praise the Lord, if it ain't nothing else but save you, praise God, he'll save you, hallelujah, glory to God. God, and then he'll go to work for you. Hallelujah. Praise, and we can go to work for him too, can't we? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's just so good, amen, to be a Christian. Amen. I guarantee you it, it, it's going to take the Lord Jesus Christ if we're going to make it to heaven. If you'd like to find us on the web, you can go to YouTube, uh, go to W-O-L-W, type in what the world, or just go to... W-O-L-W and look up what the world needs is Jesus. Or I think you can just go to YouTube and type in what the world needs is Jesus and, and, and bring it up. But either way, uh, go to W-O-L-W, find what the world needs is Jesus. Amen. There on YouTube. Also, we have a Facebook page, what the world needs is Jesus. Just go there and, and type on us. And I, I think it's called like us or whatever it is you call it. Amen. Go on there and like us or something other. Amen. I don't want you to hate us, but maybe you can go on there and like us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. If you, uh, uh, every Wednesday night, me and Brother Rick, we're at the, we're at the True Holiness Church of God. Amen. Here in Fort Payne. Uh, on Godfrey Avenue, right up here on Godfrey Avenue. Just go to Godfrey Avenue and, and just go to looking for the signs there. It says True Holiness yeah, Church man. of God, and you'll find it. We're there every Wednesday night at 530, amen, preaching the word of God. We're, we're just, just, have, just letting God have his way. Oasis Christian Center over in Huntsville, Alabama on North Parkway. Brother Larry and uh, Brother Don Crabb, amen, they're the pastors over there. want you to go over. If you're in that area, come on over there and be with them, Pentecostal Power Ministries, amen, in Larry, Georgia, amen, Brother Steve and Sister Debbie, they, they sing on the program here, amen, uh, Brother Steve and Sister Debbie Collins, amen, uh, uh, sometimes Brother Steve gets to, he gets off of work and gets to come preach for us, uh, Sister Debbie, she preaches for us sometimes on here, they 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 back us and they go with us, they, they're with us, amen, here and then, we want you to just go, if you're in that area, any, anywhere over in there, go to Pentecostal Power Ministries, amen, over in Larley, Georgia. <clears throat> That's on Larley Dam Road in Larley, Georgia. I want you to go over and be with them. We got our Holy Ghost meeting, amen, every last Tuesday night of the month. Yes, sir. Every last Tuesday night of the month, amen, Good. over there at 630 in Gurley, Alabama. I want you to come over and be with us over there every last Tuesday night. Boy, we got boy, we got it going on now. We got our little band going on yeah, everything. Yeah, right. We got a drum. We got drums now going. We got, we got the bass and the guitars and the piano. Man, just come on up. We just have church, amen. We go over and sing praises unto God and just let God have his way, amen. Just have church. That's what it's all about, folks, is to worship the Lord, amen. We just want to worship God, praise God, and just give God all the glory and everything. All of it is due to him. It's because of him that you got up this morning, amen. It's because of Jesus that you got up this morning. That Holy Ghost meeting over in Gurley, Alabama, 1169, Highway 72, Gurley, Alabama, uh, 35748. Tap that in on your little GPS thing there and just drive right on over to it. And we want to say we appreciate you here today for tuning in with us. And now I want you to worship with Sister Deborah Collins as she sings, Didn't I Walk on the Water? Hallelujah! In the middle of the night I'm praying for assurance Everything's gonna be alright And Lord, I see another battle And it's out in front of me I'm afraid I won't be able And I'll go down in defeat And he said Just take a look behind you at just how far 
far you've come Oh, and every time you ask me Didn't I deliver you? So why would you be thinking That I wouldn't see you through? And didn't I walk on the waters And not calm the raging seas? I spoke to the wind It hushed and I gave you peace and didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you call? I walk right beside you just so you wouldn't fall. And didn't I leave all the heaven just to die for your sins? I searched until I to home she said my bills are coming due lord and six days is not that long she hears a voice so soft and low he says i moved like that before i'll do this little thing and i'll give you so much more and didn't i spoke to the wind it hushed and I gave you peace and didn't I run to your rescue didn't I hear you when you call I walk right beside you just so you wouldn't fall and didn't I leave all the heaven just to die for your sins I serve Well, praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be here today? Amen. Just want to say I love you today. And I just want to tell you about somebody else, glory to God, that loves you more than I do. Amen. Glory to God. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And he came down here on this earth to die for you today. Amen. He came down here. He came down here and he felt, felt everything that we feel today. Amen. We, we feel the old mully grubs and we feel sorry for ourselves and we feel this and we feel that and we go through this and we go through that. Jesus done the same. He went through everything you can go through. Yeah. Amen. He took it all upon him. Amen. And you know what? He carried all that stuff to the cross with him. Amen. He carried all the sins of the world to the cross with him. Amen. And he, and he, and he died on that cross so that we could live again. Amen. He died on that cross so that we could live and have that life more abundantly. Amen. Glory to God. I'm, I'm proud to say today that I'm a born again child of the living king. Amen. And notice I said the living king. Amen. Because God's not dead. He's alive. He's working right here in mine and your life day by day, every day, every day, every day. He works in our lives. You know what? He works in our lives and we don't even know it. Amen. He works in our lives and we don't even have any clue what's going on. Come on. Amen. Well, all we see is the old bad stuff and this is wrong and that's wrong. But you know what? It could be a whole lot worse, glory to God. Sometimes, sometimes we need to learn to live with what we've got yeah. and learn to appreciate what we have and learn to appreciate how we get it. Glory be to God. We need to learn to appreciate all that stuff. Not, not be mad because we don't have more. Not be mad because we're looking for more and we can't get it. We should be appreciative that we've got what we've got. Amen. We should be appreciative. Listen, we should thank God that he sent his son down here to die on that cross because he didn't have to do that. Amen. You know why he done it? 
Just read John 3, 16, and that'll tell you exactly why he done it. Because he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. And you know who the world is? That's all of us, amen. That's all of us. He loved us so much. He loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son for me, for you, for everybody around you. Thank God. Thanks be unto God that he died, amen, he sent his son down here to die on that old cross yes, amen. for me and you because if he hadn't, amen, me and you would be lost as a goose, amen, we would, we would be in trouble, amen, glory yes. be to God, we would be in trouble today because we wouldn't have salvation, amen, glory to God, if we don't have salvation, we don't have Jesus, if we don't have Jesus, we can't get to heaven, amen. Wow. We got to have, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man can get to heaven, no man can get to the Father but by me. Amen. So that tells me we all got to have Jesus today. You got to know Jesus. Amen. You got to know Jesus and you got to know it. Listen, we went, we went the other day and prayed for a lady and she was, she was laying there and she's about to die. Amen. She's about, she's about on her last breath. She didn't even know we was there. And you know what? You know what God spoke to my heart and said? It's too late now. It's too late. Whenever you get to that position, whenever you get to where you're in that position, if you're not saved by then, it's too late. Amen. So we got to make sure before we get there, yeah. before we get in that position where we're laying in the bed, where we're laying there and can't, can't, our, our minds are just so far gone that we can't talk and we can't, we can't really realize what's going on. We need to make sure we're saved before we get to that place. Amen. Before we get to that place, because once you get there, you're in trouble if you're not saved. Amen. But thanks be unto God, we can get saved before we get to that place. We can be saved and on our way to heaven, and then it don't matter when we do get to that place. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus has got us right here in his hand. Glory be to God. I'm so glad today to be a Christian. And you know what? Jesus is coming back. He said he was, and you better be waiting on him today. Amen. Because he is coming back. Or you're laying there like this lady was, or you're in your car on the way to the store. You know what? Everybody says, well, I've heard that all my life. Jesus is coming back. But you know what? He ain't never showed up. But listen. Listen, let me tell you when Jesus comes back. Whenever you're driving down the road and you have a wreck and you get killed, Jesus just came back for you. Amen? It don't necessarily mean that Jesus is, Jesus is going to, the, the end of the world is coming. He is coming back. Amen? But you know what? When you have that heart attack and you fall out dead, Jesus just came back for you. Amen? And if you're not ready... Listen, don't, there's, no, there's, no way to, there's no way to go back. There's no way to go back. There's no way to turn things around. There's no waiting place for you so whenever you die, you can decide whether you want to be saved or not. Yeah. There's not such a place as that, amen. You either get saved now, you either get saved now and be sure that you're saved or there's no, there's no other chances, amen. amen. Glory be to God. Is Jesus going to come back after you today? If he does, if Jesus came back after you today, would you be saved, amen? Would you be worried, am I going to make it to heaven or am I going to go to that awful place called hell? Because whenever, when you take that last breath, that's when Jesus just came back for you, amen? But you know what? We don't got to worry about that when you got Jesus in your heart. You don't have to worry about that. Whenever you've got Jesus, when you're saved and on your way to heaven, glory to God, you don't have to worry about all that because it don't matter when he comes then. It don't matter what time of day he comes. It don't matter if it's in the night like a, like the thief comes in the night. It don't matter because we're looking for him, amen? It don't matter because you've got Jesus in your heart so he can come whenever he wants to, amen? That's what he's saying. Just be prepared. Just be ready. Just be ready because I'm not going to tell you the day or the hour. I'm not going to tell you that. That's what he said. No man knows the day or the hour. Amen. Glory be to God. He's not going to tell us the day or the hour. But you know what? We need to be ready quick as he comes. Amen. Whatever time of the day it is, amen, or you're going down the road and have a wreck, or you have a heart attack, or you're laying in the hospital, whatever, whatever's going on, we need to make sure that we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. The only way to heaven, amen, is through him. 
Isaiah chapter 43. I thank God today that he sent Jesus down here and died for us. Amen. What a, what a, what a wonderful, wonderful God we serve today. Amen. Isaiah chapter 43. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by the, thy name, thou art mine. What a promise. Glory to God. That's good right there. Amen. When thou passest through the waters, I'll be there with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, oh glory to God, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle Upon thee, for I am the Lord, yes. I am the Lord, thy God, yes. the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, <coughs> excuse me, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee, therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not. For I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. He said, fear not twice right there. Amen. He said, fear not before, because I am with thee. You know what? We can walk through life and not have to be afraid today. Amen. We can walk through life and not have to be scared of, of if we die that we're going to go to hell. We can walk through life knowing that we're on our way to heaven today. We can walk through life knowing that Jesus is right here on the inside and ready, amen, to take us to heaven. Whenever he calls on you today, you don't have to be worried, amen. If you've got Jesus in your life, you don't have to be worried. All the things of this world drag you down and pull you down and do this and do that, but you know what? The most important thing we have to worry about today it's where our salvation is at. Where, are we saved today? Are we looking for Jesus today? Amen. If Jesus came back today, are we ready? That's the most important thing that we have to know today. Amen. But he said, fear not, for I am with thee. But, but now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he formed thee. You know, over in, in Jeremiah, in Jeremiah, I think it's chapter 1, verse 5, the Bible says, Before I formed thee in the belly, amen, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. How many of us knows God knows what he's doing? Amen. How many of us knows God knows what he's going to do with you before you was ever born? Amen. How many of us knows God, Brother Larry, was ready for you to preach before you was ever born? Amen. God was ready for us to all be here today before we was ever formed in our mother's belly. God knew us before we was ever formed in our mother's belly. Boy, is that, is that not something to think about? He knew us before we was ever formed in our mother's belly. He said, O Jacob, that he formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Yes, sir. You know what? You know what he done over there in Second Chronicles? I think it's about chapter 20. O Jehoshaphat. Some of them had come to Jehoshaphat. They come and said, boy, there's a multitude of people coming after you. Amen. There's a multitude of armies coming your way, and they're not just coming to pass by. They're coming to get you, brother. They're coming to get you. They're on their way to take you out. Glory to God. Oh, yeah. oh Jehoshaphat got scared. Amen. He said, he said, I fear, glory to God. I'm in fear yeah. for what's fixing to happen. But Je Jehoshaphat knew what to do. Amen. He knew what to do. He, he done what we all need to do today. The first thing we all need to do is get on our knees and pray before the Lord God Almighty. Amen. You know what? Oh, Jehoshaphat, he called a fast. He called a fast over, over the whole nation there. He called a fast. 
he started to pray and fast because he knew what to do. He knew to get a hold of God because he knew who the Savior was. He knew who was going to pull him out of this situation. Amen. How many of us feels like there's a multitude of armies coming against them? Amen. You know, you know what? It don't have to be a multitude of armies as in army men. It could be a multitude of problems coming against you. Yeah. A multitude of things that just press on you and press down on you. Amen. And you feel like you just can't get up out of that situation. Oh, glory to God. You can't pull yourself back up, amen, because you're down in that situation. Come on. You feel like the whole world's on your shoulders, amen. You feel like the whole weight of the world's on your shoulders and you can't see no way out. You can't see any way out today. That's where Jehoshaphat was. Jehoshaphat was in that same position, amen, but he knew what to do, amen. Have you been on your knees today? Have you been talking to the Lord today about what's going on in your life? Amen. Some of us get up early in the morning. Amen. Jesus always got up early in the morning and he went to pray. They had to go hunt him up because he was out there praying, glory to God. On, you know what? Some of us need to get up a little early in the mornings. Some of us don't even roll out of bed till 10 or 11 o'clock of the day. Listen, listen, take this serious, glory to God. This is a serious, serious matter. This is, this is where you're going to spend eternity. Amen. This is something very serious. Get up 30 minutes early. Get up 45 minutes early. Get up an hour early. Come on, Amen. Get up a little bit early. Give God some time. Give God some time that you normally wouldn't give. Right. Give God some time that you normally wouldn't. You'd just go right on to sleep right on through. Come on. You know, you know what Daniel did? He purposed in his heart yep. he wasn't going to eat the meat from the king. Amen. That's, right. That's what we need to do. We need to purpose in our heart that we're going to get up 30 minutes early. We're going to get up just a few minutes early and go in there and give it to God, amen. Yeah, just give that little bit of time. Give that little bit of time to God, amen. And then, and then through the day, you need to find you somewhere. I don't care if you have to go in the bathroom at work, amen. Go in there and talk to God, amen. Go in there. You know what? You know what? Jehoshaphat knew exactly what to do. He knew to get a hold of God. He knew to, he, he knew to call a fast and get a hold of God. And I want to show you what happens whenever you do that, amen. Oh, Jehoshaphat, he got a hold of God, amen. They come to the congregation, and he said, Hearken ye, all Judea, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Glory be to God. Be not afraid. Glory to God. Be not afraid. Amen. Be not afraid. That's where we're at today. Amen. Be not afraid. Glory to God. Or dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Don't worry about this big problem that's coming to you. Amen. Amen. Listen. Be not afraid. You don't have to worry about it. Amen. I know it's a big problem. I've got them myself. Amen. But listen. Whenever you got Jesus on your side... The Bible says, be not afraid, amen. It says, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's, amen. The battle is not yours. He told Jehoshaphat, he said, that battle's not yours, amen. It's mine. I'll take care of it, glory to God. He told Jehoshaphat, listen, this earth is a battleground, glory to God. This earth is a battleground. When you walk out of your house to go to the store, when you walk out of your when, when you walk out of your house to go to church, amen, you're walking out into a battleground. Amen. Right. We need to talk to Jesus. We need to talk to God before we leave. That's what I'm talking about. Getting up just a little bit early. Going out and talk to God before you b b before you step out into this battleground because you're fixing to walk out into it. Or you know it or not, or, or you like it or not, it don't really matter. You're going to walk into that battleground. Because the devil is on his job, amen, and that's what the devil's job is. He's out, to, he's out to get you, amen. He's out to take you down. He was trying to get old Jehoshaphat here, but he couldn't do it. Amen, he just couldn't do it. God said, be not afraid, glory to God. This place is a battleground. But one day Jesus is coming back. You know what? He's coming back to get, he's coming back to get all of us, amen? He's coming back to get all of children. Yes, he is. Come on. You know what he's doing right now?
It says in John chapter 14, he said, You believe in God, believe also in me, for in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. Amen. And where I go, you will know the way. You know, Thomas was sitting over there and he said, Hold up, wait a minute. He said, I, I don't know where you're going, Jesus. I have no idea where you're going. We don't know the way. We don't know where you're going. Thomas was like, oh boy, hang on now, wait a minute. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the way, brother. Uh -huh. Jesus yeah. said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. I am the way. If you know Jesus today, you know the way, glory to God. Yeah. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. Jesus has gone to prepare us a place. Yeah. He's gone to prepare a place for us, or it be a mansion or or it be whatever. You know what? I'm not really worried about it because I know if Jesus is preparing us a place, it's going to be, it's going to be glorified. Amen. It's going to be glorified. You know what? I can't wait till we get to heaven and we're sitting around the throne of God. Oh, glory. Praising the Lord with him. Amen. Glory be to God. He said, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Yeah. See the salvation of the Lord with you. Glory be to God. He told them, don't, don't be dismayed. He told them, don't worry, don't fear, amen. Right. And they all stood up and praised the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high, amen. And if you go on over there, glory to God, when Jehoshaphat and his people came, they won the war. They went up against the Ammonites, the Moabites, and all the Bites and Ammonites, and they, they won, amen. They, they took them out, just like God said. He, they didn't even have to fight the battle, just like God said. They all turned on themselves and killed themselves. Go read it. It's in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And I want to read you the, the, the part of the, what was left, amen, what the spoils that they got. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spool of them, they found among them in abundance, in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels which they stripped off of their, themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days, three days gathering up all the spool. Amen. It was so much, amen. It was so much, it took them three days to gather up all the spool. That's the God I serve right there. That's the God I serve, amen, that whenever you win the battle, when he goes to battle with you, yeah. whenever he, you take God to the battle with you, yeah. and he tells you to fear not, you just hang on because he's fixing to load you up, glory to God. He's fixing to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you. Glory to God, you can't, you can't stand it. It's so much, amen. Praise be unto the Lord God Almighty, amen. He said, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Amen. How many of us knows we are a child of God? How many of us knows... That we are a child of the king today, amen, a child of the most living high God. And if you don't know that today, glory be to God, you need to make sure, you need to make 150% sure that you are a child of God, amen. Right now, you, you don't even need to wait five minutes from now. You need to make sure right now that you're a child of the king, amen. All you have to do is ask Jesus in your heart. Glory to God, believe that Jesus died on the cross, yep. was buried in the tomb, and raised on the third day. Amen. God raised him right up. Glory to God. Wow. And he's alive and doing well right now. Yeah. Amen. If you can believe that, you know what? You can be saved. Amen. It's, it's that simple. It's not hard. It's that simple. Glory be to God. He said, fear not. Fear not. Glory to God. Read, brother. When thou passest through the waters, I'll be with thee, and thou, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Yeah. Listen, he said, I gave Egypt. 
or for a, for thy ransom. Amen. You know, you know what, what you know what God gave for us? You know what he gave for us? You know what? He already paid the price for sin for us. He's already paid the price that we couldn't pay. We couldn't pay for our sins. We couldn't sacrifice enough animals to pay for our sins. The blood of animals just wouldn't do it. Amen. You know what? Jesus, uh, uh, God's, God gave us Jesus. God gave us Jesus. Amen. God gave us Jesus today so that we could be saved and be on our way to heaven. Amen. He gave us Jesus and they crucified Jesus. And now his blood covers us. Amen. Now we're covered by the blood of Jesus today. Amen. All our sins are covered by the blood of Jesus. When he died on that cross, that's, you know what? He's not, he's not coming back to die on that cross again. Amen. He, he's not going to go through all that again. He died on that cross one time for all of our sins. And he's not going to do it again. Amen. He, he, he's done with all that. Amen. When he comes back, He's coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's coming back to get his children today. Amen. Just like I said, he may not wait to the end of the world to come and get you. But you better be ready, glory to God, whenever it is. Love you in Jesus' name. I faced a mountain that I've never faced before. That's why I'm calling on you, Lord. I know it's been a while. Lord, please hear my prayer. I need you like I never have before. Sometimes it takes a mountain Sometimes a troubled sea Sometimes it takes a desert To get a hold Forgive me, Jesus, I thought I could control Whatever life would throw my way But this I will admit, it's brought me to my knees I need you, Lord, and I'm not ashamed to say Sometimes it takes a mountain Sometimes a troubled sea Sometimes it takes a desert To get a hold Sometimes it 
What an honor it is today. Amen. Y'all know I got to tell you, it, it's just such an honor. Yeah. To, to be able to open a Bible in this country. Yes, it is. It, it's, it's such an honor to know that we've got a God that, that loves us the way he loves us. I, I got to tell you, folks, it, you, know, you know, we're born again. When you're born again and, and old things are gone and you're a brand new creature, you know, I've told you before, from that point, you, you didn't exist prior to that. And then there was a new man. Then there was a new creation. And you were born again. And, you know, God doesn't remember the things in the past because they're gone. The blood of Jesus took care of it. But, you know, us being human, we, we tend to remember sometimes. Some, yeah, a smell or, a, you know, some instance that will, will show up and it, and it causes us to remember. And, you know, I, I've been thinking this morning. I, you think about your past sometimes, and you know what? I'm so grateful to a Savior that we have. Yes, yes. I, I remember sometimes, Brother Ricky, how I used to be. Yeah. I, I know the things I did. I know the thoughts that I used to think. And, and the bad part about it is I know the thoughts I used to think, and I used to think them on purpose. Mm -hmm. You see, I was a dead man walking around on this earth, and, and, and I didn't know any better, and I, I did things out of ignorance. And... I walked and talked in a sinful manner, and I lived in a sinful manner, and it just kept growing, and it kept growing until one day, as the Lord, you know, see, God deals with people in different ways, and I, I guess he, he kind of knew me, or he knew me more than knew myself. He kind of had to slow walk me a little bit. He, I believe he said, you know, if I push this old boy too far, too fast, we'll lose him. And that's the way people know different today. You know, folks, it, it, it doesn't hurt to do a kind thing. It doesn't hurt to, to say a kind word. It doesn't hurt to give a hug. You know, there's a lost and dying world out there, and we as Christians, it, it's our job. It, it's our first and foremost job to love. Yeah. We're supposed to love everybody. It doesn't matter how they act or how they huh. talk. It doesn't matter what they smell like. We're supposed to love them. That's right. In, in fact, there's a commandment in here. We're commanded to love them. We shouldn't have to, you know, if you're a born-again Christian and you're following Jesus, you shouldn't have to be commanded to love somebody. Right. There's a spirit inside of you that says, you know what, Lord, I don't know how, but I want to help them. And, and one of the greatest of all time things that you can ever do is just tell somebody that Jesus loves them and he's there for them. All they've got to do is call out to him. You're born again or not born again. All you've got to do is say, Lord Jesus, help me. I'm confused and I don't know what to do. See, everybody has an angel. Some, me, I probably got about a dozen. Everybody has an angel that sticks with them. What we have to do as Christians is we need to give those angels something to do. What we need to do is in Hebrews 1, 14, it says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those heirs of salvation? That's us he's talking about. When my sons leave the house and go with their friends or getting the truck or whatever and go down the road I said angels of Larry and Matthew be with them and go stay with them, protect them, lead them and guide them and direct them 
But you know, there, there's forces out there that, that are after us. But you know what? We've got a God. It's strong with him. We've got a Savior. His name's Jesus. Folks, we've got to walk closer to Jesus today than we've ever walked closer to him before. You see, there's a mindset that we've got to get. It, it's a time frame that we have. Like Brother Ricky said, and, and I love the way he, he, he phrased that. He, you know, born again or not, when you die, Jesus just came back for you. That's right. Now, he either comes back you to heaven or he come back and sent you to hell. But either way, that was your time. That was your resurrection, so to speak. Not the hope. You understand what I'm talking about. But that was your time right there. Yes, sir. You know those saying, meet your maker? Well, you're going to meet your maker one day. Yeah. But when you meet your maker, is he going to have a smile or is he going to have a frown? Right. That's up to you. It's not up to him. He wants to have an everlasting smile over you. Still has an everlasting love for you. But it's not up to him whether you go to heaven or whether you go to hell. He, he sent his son. He wrote the book. He laid the foundation. That's the only foundation there is to build upon. No man can build any other foundation than what was laid by the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross at, at Calvary. It is our responsibility as Christians to carry this message of the cross, this message of the Bible, and teach it to our children. Teach it to anybody that listens. If you gather a crowd of one person, preach. Teach them. Do what's right by it. I've said before, if I ever went to my church and I was the only one there, Brother Ronnie, I'd preach. Yeah. I'd get up there, I'd go up and I'd turn that sound system on and I'd get that microphone and I'd stand up at that pulpit and I'd preach. I said, Lord, I'm going to preach. You bring them in. You bring them in, Lord, and I'll preach to them. You bring them in and I'll love on them. It's our job, our responsibility to live in that manner to show people that there's a better way. We have, see, people get in a rut sometimes and they think, well, this is all there is to it. I'm born and I went to school and now I've, I've got what I think to be a dead-end job and there's nothing else. There's so much more out there that we can't even comprehend the half of it. Amen. God's got so much for us and, and he has so much for us here, but he has so, so much more for us up there. Now, it's fine. Whatever you amass down here, that's fine. See, let me tell you something. God does not mind you having money. The problem is, he don't want you here, him there, and money here. He wants him here, you here, and your money down here. And as in, if I have it, that's fine. If I don't, that's fine. See, that's not the issue. The issue is not having money or having things. The issue is, we as human beings, we get so far and we go... Man, I, I better not go to church today because I don't know what's going to happen with uh, that safe I got in the basement with all them jewels and diamonds in there. Them things are several million years old and they're going to be here long after you're gone. What you need to concern yourself with is who you, who's going to get them when you're gone. Because you, you got a safe, apparently you're not going to sell them. You're going to hold on to them. Yeah. Okay. If you're going to hold, listen. It's the thing that the Bible talks about the right hand a lot of times. And this ain't my message, but I feel like this is the Holy Ghost. Come on, amen. The, the, right, the Bible talks about the right hand. And the, one of the reasons it is, there's some old Jewish customs. But the main reason is, where does it say Jesus sits at? On the right hand of the throne of the Father. The only thing you need to have over here is your Bible. Have your money and your jewels and your diamonds over here. But put this right hand up here and put all that stuff down here. See, that stuff really, none of that belongs to you. It belongs to the earth. Where'd you get it from? Where'd the diamond come from? Where'd the gold come from? It came from the earth. Guess where it's going back to? God loves us so much. Do you know the streets of gold in heaven? The, the revelation, I believe, talks about that gold being so pure you can see through it. It's just like glass. You'll never find that pure diamond or gold on this earth. Folks, God loves us so much more. We literally ought to be thanking God throughout the day, murmuring and muttering under our lips while we're doing our job and while we're shopping and while we're cutting grass. We ought to be ever mindful of the blood of Jesus Christ. I, I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful for what he's done for me. He has done so much more for me than I could ever... There's no way I could repay them. And here's the beauty of the whole thing. He never asked me to repay it. 
He never asked me one time to give him back any physical thing to him for what he did. Come on. The only thing he said was two words to me. After he called my name, he said, Larry. I said, yes, sir. He said, follow me. Yes. Amen. That's all he said to do. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you something. If you and, and I'm going to use some analogies here. If you're a football fan, this just it's that time of year. You're a Georgia fan or an Alabama fan, Tennessee, it don't make no difference. You follow them. Some men, could, you could ask them, hey, who won the, the football game in 1986 national championship? They'd tell you. Who was a coach? They'd tell you. Who was a quarterback? Who was a tight end? Yeah. How many yards? They'd tell you all that stuff. Yeah. Follow, they follow that. Jesus said, follow me. If you follow Jesus... You'll begin to get into the scripture and you'll go, okay, if I'm going to follow God, I need to know a little something about God. Amen. If I'm going to follow Jesus, I need to know what would Jesus do and how would he act and how would he react. When Ricky was talking about earlier, I had to write down a couple of notes. You know, God, the emotions that we have today, that's why God had to send Jesus. That's one of the reasons. He sent Jesus down here. Jesus, every emotion that you've ever experienced, highs or lows, Jesus experienced all of that. Right. He went through all that so he would know. And, and you see, he already had love and compassion for us. But when he came down here and he lived as a man 33 years, 33 and a half years, that, that type of time frame, he experienced to the highest and lowest of levels every emotion imaginable. He didn't just get a taste of it. He got the full spectrum, every emotion imaginable. He got the highest of the high. He got the lowest of the low. You know why? Because he loves us. He said, you know, we got man down here, and we really, we're God, and we really don't know what they go through because we can't experience what they experience. So he sent Jesus down here. He said, I've got to know what's in the man I created. I've got to know how he feels and how he thinks. Yeah, he knows this because he created us, but he wanted to experience it for himself. He did that for you. He did that for you. He did that for every human being. Folks, all you've got to do is one thing. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. My life is a wreck. I've messed it up, but I know from what I've heard people say and tell me about you that you're a fixer of things and you're a repairer of the breach and you'll restore my path and put it on the right track. All you've got to do is say, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Teach, I don't know a thing, Lord. Teach me. Put a fire down in my bones and let me learn. Teach me how to release that fire out for others. Let me be on fire for God today. Ought to be fired up for God today. Listen to this. Now we're going to 1 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Don't be misled. Don't, don't let anybody out there, just, you just fall with every weight or wind of doctrine. Somebody comes along and says something, you go... Oh, that sounds good. I think I'll go that way for a while. Yeah. There's no root in you. That seed that got planted in you is going to dry up and wither away. Mm -hmm. Don't you be misled. Right. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Come on. Folks, there ain't but one way to get to heaven, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. There's only one way for you to get to heaven, and that's to accept Christ as your Savior. Now, you know, there's a whole lot of talk here today with the way the government's going and countries are moving around. Uh, everybody gets offended. What you can say, oh, you don't say that because them folks get offended. Keep praying school because folks get offended. Let me tell you something. I love y'all enough to tell you I don't care if I offend anybody or not. Homosexuals will not make it to heaven. Right. You, you can say what you want to say. You can do what you want to do. Same-sex marriages, there's no such thing as a same-sex marriage in heaven. You're not making it to heaven because of what you you get some type of doctrine and you heard some preacher who's not really a preacher of the gospel and they get up there and they tickle your ears and they tell you what they think you want to hear to keep you coming to church to keep those seats filled to keep them tithe baskets filled yes. that's the only reason they do that 
Let me tell you something. What did I just get through reading? Drunkers, effeminate, idolaters, blasphemers. You think you're going to do all that stuff and God's going to let you into his kingdom? No, he's not. Why do you think hell was prepared? At first it was prepared for Satan and his cohort. Now with everything happened, hell, the Bible talks about, it says, hell hath enlarged itself. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? And I'm trying to speak and left love here to be serious with you. Your actions, there's only one action that will get you to heaven, and that's your acts to accept Jesus. Yes, sir. You can't live a lifestyle the way you want to live, the way your body wants to live, and get to heaven. My friends, it just don't work like that. Right. Come on. You can't just go out here one day. I can't, I'm 54 years old. We're in Fort Payne, Alabama. I can't leave this studio and walk down here and rent me a building and hang me a sign out that says, Larry Moss, attorney at law. It don't work that way. I... You just, I'm, it can't work that way. I can't be a doctor. I can't be a lawyer and just do that. There's a process to do that. There's a process to get you to heaven. There's a process to get you healed and delivered and set free. Up, you see folks walk around today and they don't even know that they're in bondage. Right. They just think that's the way it is. My mama was that way. My granddaddy was that way. I remember them talking about my great grandparents when I was a kid about this way. So it must be my turn. It don't have to be your turn. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, for whom the Son sets free, it's free indeed. Amen. That means you're free to do the deeds that God's given you to do. Yeah. Nor, uh, verse 11, and such were some of you. Now see, when I read that, I got to look, it's like I'm looking in the mirror. Such were some of Larry. You understand? There's a few categories I don't mind telling you. I fell into a few of them categories. Praise God, I don't fall in them categories anymore. I've got one category, and it's called the blood of Jesus. And such for some of you, but ye are washed. Now, oh, now you ought to shout here in just a minute. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. That right there talks to me about two different things. Listen to this. If we are washed, sanctified, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, that means we got born again. Is that right? Now here comes now you may not want to agree with this, but I'm going to tell you, here comes the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And by the Spirit of our God. Uh huh? huh? You got born again, you got washed, you got sanctified, set free, delivered, and the Lord picked you up and set you upright. That's Jesus. And it says plainly, when the word and is there, it's a conjunction. And, but, and, or, it marries this sentence, it marries this part of words to this part of words. It means they go together. And by the Spirit of our God. That means you get born again. That means you get filled with the Spirit of the living God. I don't, I'm not going to go into that because that's not part of my message. But I'm going to tell you what. If you're born again and you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, all I ask you to do is one thing. Start talking to God about it. Yes. He's the one. That, it's him. It's his spirit. Ask him. About, don't, don't, I'm not talking about speaking in tongues and laying on the hands. Just ask God about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just ask wow. him. And start asking him. Say, Lord, I'm open if you'll just give me an answer and see what happens. I think you might like it. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought unto the power of any. Paul's saying right here, he said, you know, if I want to eat that food, I can eat that food. And if I go eat that food, that's fine, but I'm not going to let that have dominion over me. If I want to go watch a movie, I can go watch a movie. The, the right kind of movie, okay? But I'm not going to let that have dominion over me. I'm not going to live in that fantasy world. I'm not going to go out here and draw myself up to something that I'm not. He said, I'm not going to let anything have any power or dominion over me except Jesus. That's what he's talking about right there. And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that, which, that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. I believe it said something like that over in Genesis 2.24. 
man leave his, man leave his uh, family, cleave to a woman, they get married, the two shall be one flesh. Come on. God looks down at a man and woman. He doesn't say a man and woman. He sees one spirit. Supposed to be working in harmony for the glory of God. But he that is joined unto... Now listen to this. This me right here. Y'all can't... Nobody have this scripture. This mind belongs to me. He said, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. If you're joined unto God, if you're joined unto the Lord, you and the Lord are one. Wherever you go, God goes with you. Hey, look out now. Wherever you go, the Lord Jesus is going with you. You can't take Jesus out of your spirit and set him over here and say, Lord, I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to go sin for a day and two. Come, on. come back, Lord, forgive me, and come back inside of me. You can't put Jesus back on the cross. It don't work that way. Now, here's what he tells us to do. Now, this, here's a lifestyle that we all ought to follow. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. He's telling you not to do it. You're sinning against your body. You're sinning against God. Listen to this. If you're born again, you're bought with a price. You don't own you anymore. That may not be good English, but you get the point. What? Verse 19. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? There's that Holy Ghost again. Look out. Which ye have of God, and ye are not your own question mark. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. I don't know as if it gets any plainer than that. Come on. Let me read that again. Come on. Amen. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, now there's another place in the Bible that says you're not your own, you're bought with a price. Y'all find that and look it up, you'll like it. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Let me read that and amplify it. I got time. Ye were bought with a price, purchased with a preciousness, and paid for, made his own. So then honor God and bring glory to him in your body. Honor God. Honor God with your body. Honor God with your spirit. Oh, I, I was preaching this yesterday. I had to preach at my church yesterday. Basically the same thing. We ought to live the lifestyle that everybody looks at us and says, something different about that old boy. Don't know what it is. But I got to find out. that he don't. I know him. We went to school together. He's not the same man now as he was back then. We ought to honor God in our body. We ought to honor God with our time. Do you know when you tithe, you give 10%, right? Well, what's 10% of a day? That'd be about two hours and 40 minutes. Ought to give God at least two hours and 40 minutes a day. You ought to give him all of it, but at least that. Right. Folks, my time has run out. Call upon the name of the Lord. Yes. He is ready, willing. He, he's closer to you than you think he is. Yes, he is. Come on. He's within earshot. Call upon him, and he'll save you and do you better than you've ever thought you could ever have. Guys, I love you. I'll see you in a week.